Ladies and gentlemen, that was awesome. We just experienced, well, I just experienced, I'm recording right after uh, PLE goes off. Possibly one of NXT's finest shows of all time. From top to bottom, it was just good action. There was never really a low point, much of one. The closest one we get to, I'll, I'll get to that later. But stand and deliver, for lack of a better word, no pun intended, delivered. But how did it go down? Let's talk about it. This is the stand and deliver review. Uh, kicking off, we had Joe Gacy versus Sean Spears on the kickoff show, which I didn't know. Thank God I turned on the show when I did. But it was a typical match. It was it was not much different than what you'll see on a regular episode of NXT. Um, I guess the, the note is, well, two notes is one rich holland came back if you don't know like retired recently on the episode of nxt he came back and hit gacy with a chair shot which plays into like the whole sean spears telling rich to like find his true self be the bad like bad guy you can be the second part of that is just not meaning a damn thing it didn't really play into the match all that all that much and gacy ended up getting the uh one two three and the win I gave this a, uh, a C plus. Like I said, it was wasn't bad. It was just nothing that this could have been on NXT, and I think that's why they put it on the kickoff show. But I'm I am a Sean Spears mark, so anytime we can see him on TV, I'll take it. But like I said, the whole Ridge attacking Gacy with chair, and the fact that it didn't play into anything kind of takes it down for me. So gets a C plus. But let's move on to the main card. All right, the main card kicks off with Braun Breaker, Baron Corbin versus Nathan Frazier and Axiom for the NXT Tag Team Championships. And I said in the my preview that this is going to be power versus speed, and that did not disappoint. Um, I have it even it, like in my notes. Uh, the, this is the, the right match to open up. It was going to be fast paced. It was going to be hard hitting. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a sprint. Baron uh, Corbin hit a top row splash out of nowhere. Braun continues to show why he is basically at the total package of NXT. Nathan Frazier and Axiom continue to be faster than Lightning. And his match was just a damn tornado. The match ended when Baron and Braun hit a like a, a combo of their finishers. With Baron hitting like a half end of days into a spear by Braun for the 1-2-3 in the win to retain their titles. I gave this a A minus. Um, like I said, it was fun. It was action uh, packed. There were some like I think a couple hiccups in there, but the how fast they're moving, I didn't knock it down too much. But again, like I said, I think this this was still the right match to open up, get the crowd on their feet, and Braun and Baron get, get to continue their awesome reign. Uh, Nathan and Axiom had a great match. I think they deserve another shot down the line. What, is it right away? I don't know, but. I would not be mad they ran this back. Uh, Braun and Baron retained the titles, and I gave the match an A-. minus. All right, next we had the NXT North American Championship, which was contested in a triple threat between the champion Boba Femi, Dijak, and Josh Briggs. And this match is brought to you by Paramount Plus's new series coming out, Knuckles. I'm not kidding. The, the match was sponsored by Knuckles. This was the match I was looking forward to the most, I would say. And this was my... One of, I'll just say my favorite match of the night. Um, it was big, meaty men slapping meat. Three absolute hosses just doing whatever they can in their ar arsenal, doing whatever they uh, can just to beat each other down. You had dudes that are like six something up, 200 something pounds, just flying through the air, throwing each other at each other, using each other for moves. Um, it was absolutely bananas in the best way possible. So the match ended with Obafemi to pick up Dijak, a man, a grown ass, huge grown ass man, and powerbomb him into Josh Briggs for a one, two, three. Oba retains. I gave this match a damn A plus. It it titillated my senses, for lack of a better term. It was great. It was everything I wanted. Oh my goodness! This in any RPL, any other show. Not, uh, not this one. This one could have main evented and would fit right in. Oba looks like, continues to look like a star. Uh, Dijak car uh, carried the match. And you know, Josh Briggs, 
he was clearly the third man in the match, but he didn't feel out of place. I think he showed that he's a a, a player to come in NXT. But yeah, your winner is Oba Femi, A+. Next, we have the six women tag match between JC Jane, Kiana James, Izzy Dane versus Thea Hoff, Bayla Henley, and Kalani Jordan. And the match started off, but immediately with the heels, bad guy, turn for bad guys of wrestling, Team JC attacking Team Thea before the bell, and the heels controlled the early part of the match. And what was great about this match is it, to me, proved how uh, far along women's wrestling has gone because you look like 10, 15 years ago, women's match not involving the, the title on a, uh, on a show was just absolute dog shit 90% of the time. It was the worst thing your eyes could see. And it was just, it, that was the bathroom break. But these women know who, they know their character so well that they know like what moves to do, how to act, how to react to their teammates and opponents. That this wasn't a bathroom break match. This was a, actually a pretty decent match. And you had even the involvement of Chase U from the outside. You had Jasmine Nix, who was on team, I call him team baddie. I, I don't know. Uh, whatever. The heel side. And then the culmination of like weeks of J JC Jane tormenting Thea Hale. Thea Hale finally got her one on one, no interference, and got the whoop on her for a second. And then the match ended when, after that, Thea Hill makes Izzy Dane tap with the Kimura lock for the uh, submission win. Team Thea with a win. I gave this a B minus only because I th this match would have been better had they probably cut like three to five minutes off. I thought it ran a little long. And to me, that hurt it. But overall, decent match. B minus. Like I said, Thea gets her revenge and her team wins. Quick note here. Um, after this match, uh, the GM Ava announced that there's a new title coming to NXT, the NXT North American women's title, which is basically a mid card title for the women. It's not the, uh, world championship for women. It's the next step down. So on the, uh, main roster, think of like the intercontinental title or the United States title, like that next tier down title. That's what this is for women. I think it's long overdue, especially on the main roster. The main roster needs that. There's so much, so much talent up there. Not everyone can be in the world title picture. Same thing with NXT. You know, there's talent down there. Not everyone could be contesting for the title. Smart idea. So after that, showing at ringside, the newest NXT sighting pronounced Julia, which I have been pronouncing her name wrong for a while. She's, uh, a, internationally known superstar um i'll admit i'm not too familiar with her game but i see i see her her clips posted all the time on x so and it's a huge deal so anytime new talent could come in and change the landscape i'm all for but she was shown and it leads us into our nxt women's championship match between lyra valkyra and roxanne perez this match is brought to you by fallout streaming on prime if you know before the match uh lyra was sporting an injured arm and early on for the jump roxanne targeted like uh, targeted it uh it was methodical the match started at slower pace because it was just roxanne whooping that ass beating on that arm beating on that arm being arm until lyra finally got some offense in including hitting two northern light uh suplexes in a row without letting go so basically like grabbing somebody like by the waist flipping them over and then getting up while the hole's still in and flipping him over again. Uh, did that for a close uh, fall. Roxanne hit her finish her pop rocks for a close two count. Tatum Paxley came out, which if you don't know, Tatum's like Lyra's friend slash stalker. Uh, came out, tried to be a friend, end up getting in Lyra's way and then gets kicked out. Which devol uh, then the match evolves into Roxanne and Lyra doing some like chain pins wrestling, which is like a Basically, like a quick pin, a quick pin, a quick pin, a quick pin, a quick pin for a bunch of uh, two uh, two counts. After that, Lyra tries for her her finishing move, which is the Nightwing. Roxanne counters that with a Poison Rana, hits the Pop Rocks, and then hits a cross face for a submission win. And your new NXT Women's Champion is 
Roxanne Perez. I gave this match a B plus. I like when matches like build towards something, but to me, almost like the like reverse of the, the six woman tag, I think they should have uh, put more time into like going from a slow pace to the fast paced. It was kind of, a, it was too much. It was like slow, 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 fast. When I think it could have been more fast paced towards the end. But again, Roxanne gets her win. Uh, it was her, it was about showing that, you know, she's smart, methodical, attacked the arm. Lyra came in and not 100%, which was her downfall. So again, Roxanne is your, your champ, get a B plus. All right, next we have the NXT Championship between Ilya Dragunov and Tony D'Angelo. And much like the North American title match, this match was absolutely stiff. We know uh, Ilya is uh, known for like hard hitting and stuff, but Tony D'Angelo doing it uh, surprised me. I I know uh, I, I saw it on like X something. Tony surprised a lot of people in this match because he doesn't have the, the biggest move set. But what he does do, he did it well. But even when uh, his family, because he is the Don of XD, even when his family offered like brass knuckles or offered to cheat, Tony's like, no, I want to do this on my uh, my own. And Ilya made him pay just whooping that ass. Whooping that ass and totally fine. Got some offense in, including uh, like disturbingly cool scene where uh, Tony was beating Ilya made Ilya bite the bottom rope and then came down and kicked on his neck. Action spilled out to uh outside the ring. Um to where uh Ilya hit, hit his H bomb which is his finisher is a uh, basically a, a dropping elbow to the uh, face. He hit that on the outside like floor and then hit it again on the Spanish announce table on Tony. Match goes and then a match finally ends with Ilya hitting a super H bomb, which is basically hit him on top rope, right into uh, Tony's face for the one, two, three, and to retain. I gave this a A minus. It was a good match. I thought Tony could have had a little bit more offense in there. I get why. I get why not. Because Ilya is one of the baddest motherfuckers on the roster. But nevertheless, A minus. Super hard hitting. You know, they dab each other up after words, respect, respect. Tony shown that he can hang with the best. He didn't look out of place. It wasn't uh, painfully obvious that Ilya was carrying. And yeah, A minus. All right, we are getting to the main event, which is two, uh, two men that were once brothers, now bitter enemies. We had Carmelo Hayes versus Trick Williams. And a bit of context, something that's cool. This is the first time two black men have a uh, main event, a, a li premium live event since Booker T and The Rock all the way at SummerSlam 2001. So, cool beans. Um, Carmelo came out and it's like Killmonger inspired gear. Trick was a hometown hero. He came uh, came out with the crowd as back. I like to start like the first couple minutes where Melo was just toying with Trick because Melo knew he was like the more technical wrestler of the two tricks more just straight up fighter and so like uh mellow does that and then trick finally gets an advantage and throws mellow to the crowd and they just start whooping jars ass in the crowd now this wasn't a no dq match but the again gm ava told the ref hey don't be calling no 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 dqs don't be doing that we need a winner uh decisive winner and so that led into the mat led into the field of match where it was a fight this what match wasn't really technical and i and which is good it shouldn't have been it should have been a straight up fight it broke down midway through with Mello forcing like Mello getting near the ref and when trick went to go get him Mello ho hopped out the way so trick's big ass fell on the ref knocked him out which let Mel was like oh shit i can do something so he went got a chair was about to uh smack trick with it trick got it instead started smacking up uh Mello with it until the ref Came to grab the chair while it was uh, close to no DQ. It was no DQ. Then Mel hit a uh, hit a low blow for a two. Ref get the ref gets taken out again. Hits his nothing but net, which is a top rope leg drop, while the dude's like hunched over. Second ref comes, close two count. They they fight a little bit more, and then Trick hits his running knee called the Trick knee. 
for the one, two, three, and the win. Like I said, it wasn't the most technical match. It wasn't like a five-star classic in terms of that, but the emotion behind it, they played into that well. Both men got a chance to shine. Both men got a chance to uh, prove uh, they belong there. Both men got a chance to prove their main event. So like just based on the emotion alone, the main event, all that stuff, and the way they played into that, I gave it an A+, plus because it made me feel something. And that's what wrestling's supposed to do, make you feel something. But yeah, Trick uh, closes out the show, uh, celebrating in front of his home crowd. And that is Stand and Deliver. Overall, I gave it a, a I was teetering between A, A minus. I went A minus only because I thought the kickoff show was a uh, match was eh. And then the women's uh, part was kind of not, like I said, this is what I was talking about in the beginning. It wasn't a low point, but it was the, the lowest point, if that makes sense. So it gives me, a, I gave it an A minus, but the crowd energy was crazy. The uh, uh, most attended uh, NXT event of uh, NXT uh, PLE, whatever you want to call it, of all time. Um, not, there was no, nothing was bad or boring at all. It was great. And like I said, Trick getting his a career moment in front of his home crowd, celebrating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Getting revenge on the guy who betrayed him. Great way to close the show and great way to kick off WrestleMania weekend. The MVP, I told I gave it to Dijak. He is all he is Mr. NXT at this moment. He's the one that carries these PLE matches a lot. And he, this is what he did. Um even though everyone did their part, he was still the uh the best man in that match, and it showed through the moves, through the facial expression, all that. He was the best part of the best match of the night, which to me make some MVP and you can guess what my match at night was it was the end of North American triple threat hard hitting great from start to finish no one looked out of place it built the ending built uh, Oba family like even more badass than he is Dijak's MVP and again Josh what was the third man there but didn't feel out of place so that triple threat match is my match of the night close runner up was the main event just because of the emotion all that kind of stuff what they did so yeah, that is my stand and deliver review. Let me know in the comments below, like below. You agree with any of my grades? You disagree with my grades? What did you guys think of the show? And yeah, and do you think it was a great way to kick off WrestleMania weekend? Be on the lookout for my WrestleMania reviews. Now, I don't know if I'm gonna split it up night one, night two. We'll see. But in order to know, go ahead and subscribe. Go ahead and like this video. And I will catch you guys in the next one. It's heartfelt on all socials. And I'm heartfelt right now. Peace.